Douglas, wow, it's been a very important element in my life. But I did spend 10 years in India, Osho, Rajneesh, ashrams, and Osho had left his body, as they say, and I was really settling down to edit his works for the foreseeable future. And I came home to England for no very good reason, probably a new visa required, and I was given by my wife, who had found this book falling on her head in the local bookshop, The Little Book of Life and Death. Well, by a chap, I read this on having no head before, but it was much too busy building the great city in Oregon, uh, involved in the whole Osho show. So it didn't particularly interest me. Nevertheless, you're on an aeroplane, so you read it. And I arrived in London gasping for breath. Who is this guy? I must find him. Osho had said, you don't need a new master, I'll be with you all the time. But nevertheless, I was interested to know anybody who knew who they were. And this guy certainly did. So what do I do? I, he's obviously of a considerable age, and maybe he's dead by now. So I write to the public publishers, they give me an address, I write to the address, and quite quickly, a letter came from Douglas, giving a list of workshops, essentially. So I go to a workshop down in London, and I can just remember it, <laughs> I remember it totally, because suddenly here was this chap, um, neat, uh, old beard and things, but no sense of old age at all. And he ran the workshop. And when I looked through the tube, saw there was nothing this end. It explained everything that I've been spending 10 years doing with Osho and in Oregon and everywhere else, all those meditations, which I enjoyed and uh, was happily going along. But suddenly I saw what it was all about this end of the tube. This is where I am. And I've never lost that wonderful discovery, that sense. It's been with me all along. So that was me, but then of course he was so generous. He said, come and see me any time. And I'm living two or three hundred miles away. It was quite a trip. But I used to go across whenever I could and stayed in his house. Um, I was slightly surprised to see Clearly, somebody like Osho had never been near a, a fireplace or anything and uh, n had no idea how to look after himself because we worshipped him pretty much. Here was Douglas kneeling by the fireplace, stoking the fire. Wow, who is this guy? And then in the evening we used to watch snooker. He seemed to be very keen on snooker and claimed, much to Catherine's annoyance, that uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan or whatever was enlightened. There he was, looking with the oil, <laughs> with the, the cue, clearly enlightened at that moment. It's one of the lovely things about Douglas for me was that um, seeing who you are, you are enlightened. This awful word, which I've been pursuing for ten years in, or in 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 India and, and elsewhere, yeah, when you look here, you are enlightened. Now the work begins. <laughs> And obviously, uh, one's understood what that's meant ever since. So, wonderful evenings, uh, walks on the river with Douglas, which went on, of course, until right at the end when Catherine and I, and Douglas is limping by now, and I was struggling as he walked. So many memories like that. What a, well, what a lovely friend he was. And he wrote a little thing for me on ball games, which is my other passion. <laughs> And so on. And then Douglas has been a friend ever since and uh, still is.